All right, time once again to just sort of sit down and go over my notes and see what the hell has been happening recently. Um, first things first, it uh, feels like my schedule is just kind of settling down. Uh, I'm finally at a point where it's like I kind of know what's going to happen in any given week, uh, and I know what to expect from each day. So for the past few weeks there, it was essentially like I had to figure out each day as it came, and I didn't really have a good idea of, oh, I'm going to be doing this tomorrow, or I'm going to be doing that tomorrow. Like, I had to spend spend about like 20 minutes the night before and just going over like, okay, hang on, what's my work schedule? What's my school schedule? Um, that's, that's all kind of down pat. Uh, my work schedule is still kind of flexible in that it could change week to week, but for the most part, there there is kind of a set pattern that seems to be popping up, and I generally know how to work around that. So, good. But uh, regardless, on to the... Uh, I guess. Okay. So apparently this is uh, a controversial thing from me, which I didn't think it was going to be, but apparently it is. Um, I did watch the new One Piece, uh, the one that came out on Netflix recently, and apparently a lot of people really, really love it. A lot of people are saying it's the first adaptation that really captured the heart and spirit of One Piece, and that it's... I don't know. I, like, what other people are saying about how it's good, I just... I don't get it. Now, before I say anything else, I will say, um... The things I like about it are generally production value, and by that I mean the sets are fucking amazing. If if you've ever seen Hook with Daniel Hoffman, the the grown up Peter or Daniel Hoffman and and <laughs> Robin Williams, um, Robin Williams playing an older version of Peter Pan, um, the, there are some massive, wonderful sets in that movie, and I still kind of point towards it for what can be done with physical sets. Um, but for Hook, there's a lot about that movie where you can just sort of look at something and go, that's an obvious movie set. It's a great movie set, it's fantastic and allows for a lot of fun little moments, but you can just kind of tell it's not real. Uh, versus in this Netflix One piece, or Netflix piece, um, it, it, the sets are good enough that you don't really get pushed out of anything that's happening. There's not a moment where you go, oh, that's clearly a set. It feels like a real environment that people are, are involved in. And any any physical set that could do that, fucking fantastic, love it. Um, the other thing I generally uh, will say I, I'm quite positive about, uh, the fight choreography. And it, it more, more than just the choreography, it really feels like everyone who was involved in the production, and again, this is kind of just, into the whole production design thing. Um, the camera work was amazing, um, the choreography was amazing, the staging was amazing. Um, pretty much, they, they really took the effort to figure out, okay, how are we going to make this moment not only engaging, but fun, and how are we gonna have it so that the audience just sort of sees that moment and goes, oh yeah, <laughs> that's my shit. <laughs> um, and I, I think they nailed it. When it came to fight choreography, I really do think they nailed it. Now, those are pretty much the only two things I can look at from the series and say, that's great. And that's, f okay, so for somebody like me, that's not enough for me to um, to just sort of say this series or, or Netflix piece is good. Because the other aspects of it, I feel, were draining, frustrating, and just bleh. And we'll start with the nitpick. Uh, one of the nitpicks I, I just continually saw, one of the things that continually put me out of the series, is the costume design, of which 95% of the costume design was great, in that they really took the effort to make sure these characters look like they come from this cartoony pirate world. Except, <laughs> I, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but um, when it came to characters with colored hair, so for example, Nami's sister, uh, she has blue hair, but Nami's sister's eyebrows do not match the hair. Similarly, <laughs> you have Kobe, who who has pink hair, but his eyebrows are not pink. Like, this is one of those things. Like, fundamentally, the human the human mind is trying to like put together information to figure out a consistency in somebody's like in in, in how somebody is presented to other people. So when you see that somebody has brown eyebrows and pink hair, there's a part of your brain that just sort of goes, "Hang on, something's off." <laughs> 
And and for me, that was bothering me the whole fucking time because that is every single character. Pretty much every character with colored hair, um, including Zoro, Nami, uh, Nami's sister, Buggy, Kobe. Like, all of these characters had hair that was clearly colored outside of their natural color because the hair on either their face or the... Yeah, the hair on their face was just different. It Like, something didn't click. Now, that's a nitpick. That's one of those things where it's not going to impact, like, the actual writing of the story, but it was one of those things where I was like, why the fuck? Why, why couldn't you just take, like, the five minutes to fix that one? Um... But the biggest thing, and, and really the element that when I was watching Netflix Beast, I just, I just could not, I could not deal with it. It was not funny. It was not funny in the slightest. There was no comedic moments. Every single character that was supposed to be funny was no longer fucking funny. And I mean every fucking character. So, the, th the, first, the first warning signs I saw, Nami... Uh, when Nami shows up, Nami's supposed to be kind of a sly trickster. She's kind of fucking around with everyone, and she will absolutely sort of undermine somebody uh, to just get the upper hand, or play into their game to get the upper hand. She's a, she's a trickster. She's a thief. That's what she does. But this Nami is just cynical. Like, just sort of sits there and makes snarky little quips the whole time. I'm like, what's clever about that? That's just being a... This is something on Twitter. Like... To me, this Nami felt more like, it just, I don't know, a junior in college than she felt like somebody who had gone through, um, all the, like, all the fucking bullshit you have to go through when you're trying to infiltrate. Like, you have to pretend to hide, you have to put on a mask, you have to start playing the part. I got none of that from Nami. Um, Zoro. Zoro was another example. Zoro was a funny character, and a lot of where, what Zoro's comedy comes from is that he has over-the-top fucking reactions. Right? When Luffy does something crazy, Zoro doesn't just sit there and go like, Luffy, you're an idiot. <laughs> or something along those lines. Zoro is like, yeah, fuck you, I'll kill you! <laughs> okay. part, of, part of the comedy is that Zoro, this kind of serious character, is just the straight man who plays it so over the top. And then you have the same element with uh, the relationship between Sanji and Zoro. Both of them are just so... They're so fucking angry at each other that they, they're they constantly screaming. And you never get any of that. Like, you never get a moment where Zoro is just over the top going like, Luffy, what the fuck? He's, he's just too cool. And I think that, like, a lot of it feels like a flanderization of what many of these characters were. Um, Zoro, he's the cool character. He's always been the cool character, but part of being cool is his comedy is that he, like, freaks out over the top. You never get that in Netflix Beast. You you just sort of get the cool, calm, Zoro is always a badass. And that's that's not a fun Zoro. There's nothing about that Zoro where I'm, uh, I'm just sort of like, yeah, that's the Zoro that I was hoping for. It's nothing what I was hoping for. Um, Usopp. Usopp has always been... A coward, sure, but he he's a coward who absolutely understands that he wants to be someone, uh, someone better. Um, this Usopp was... He went in the opposite direction. He was more flanderized, of, like, constantly being a fucking idiot. That was my problem. <laughs> I can't comment much on Usopp because it was only there, like, very, very briefly. Um, and then I think, honestly, the, the, the worst, the worst recipient of this was Buggy. Like, I, apparently a lot of people are talking about this buggy like it's the best buggy out there, but even in the very beginning of One Piece, buggy is a joke. Like, his whole point is that all of his menace is undercut by the fact that he's a fucking idiot, and that he's he has this over-the-top rage. Like, specifically, the whole thing with the nose. They played that straight. Okay, so, like, in the One Piece comic, the first time, um somebody like says something that gets misconstrued into being called nose it's like a whole japanese pun uh <laughs> buggy blows the guy the fuck up <laughs> but when when it happens with luffy it's just sort of played for a fucking laugh like oh you don't want me to talk about your nose well your nose is fucking wild and then buggy like has a breakdown 
The funny part about that is Bucky gets angry, but he almost has to get consoled by his people. Like, he, he has to go back and he goes like, I can't believe this motherfucker is talking about the nose. <laughs> and then the whole thing with, like, how do you beat the guy who separates his body uh, with the, the chop chop fruit? And <laughs> fucking Luffy's solution is to just kick him in the balls. Like... Buggy has always been sort of this comedic character. He's somebody who is very, very good at bullshitting his way into a position that he really should not have. <laughs> that's that's always just kind of been Buggy's deal. Um, and then this one, you get to Netflix Buggy, and he's just the Joker. And I just couldn't understand why he was suddenly the fucking Joker. Like, he's, he's just played, like... Oh, I'm wacky, I'm weird, and I'm also menacing. Mwah. Be scared. Like, who the fuck is scared of Buggy? No one was scared of Buggy. The whole point of Buggy's goddamn first arc is that none of them are scared of Buggy. It's... I, 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 I just... I don't know how to... Like, I don't have enough time. I don't really have enough to dive into it. But I, I just feel like there's a lot of people who are going like, Yeah, it's good, because it looks good. But... I feel like this is one of those that's going to sour over time. I feel like a lot of people are kind of going to have those moments. Uh, especially a lot of people. You're, you're going to get a lot of people who watch that and they go like, Oh, this is what One Piece is? Oh, I, I guess I'll like check out the original story. And then they're going to see it's um, that even from the very beginning, One Piece is just kind of this ridiculous tale. Like that's built into the storytelling of One Piece is that if it's funny, Oda wants to do it. <laughs> Oda very much uh, tries to tackle like how do I how do I solve this problem? Well, <laughs> what would be the thing that is just ridiculous as a solution? And none of that is a Netflix piece. And I don't know. I I feel like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the odd man out on this one for a very very long time. Um, I think it's gonna take a couple of years, but after a bit of time, I really do feel like people are gonna sour. People are going to look back on Netflix piece, and I don't think it's going to be positive. I, I don't think, in retrospect, we're going to be looking at it as positively as a lot of people are now. Um, but, you know, I could I could 100% be wrong. Um, it could be that I'm just being a cynical son of a bitch. <laughs> Who knows? Um, outside of that, the uh, I've been doing a lot of research into Ronnie James Dio over these last few weeks. Um, there's a school project I'm working on, and I think there's a lot about Ronnie James Dio that it's documented, it's out there, but uh, there's, there's a certain portion of the project that I've kind of been looking into, and more specifically, the school project is limited in that I only have a little bit of time to, like, it's a three to five minute presentation, which is just way too short for all the material I want to go over. <sighs> because of that, uh, my plan is now I'm kind of going to put that on the the back burner of interesting videos that I think could one day be made. Now, I don't I don't know if that uh, I don't know when or how I'd tackle that. There's still a few other things I, I want to tackle and obviously I need to make it through this semester. I need to make it through next semester. Like I, there's a lot to figure out there, but um, just sort of a little note. I'm kind of making my uh, for myself of like, hey, Ronnie James Dio. I, I do want to make a video about like the work of Ronnie James Dio and how there's actually a kind of, I suppose, yeah, the best way you could say it is a philosophical through line for, for Dio and how essentially even from the very beginning, you could see this kind of idea of how to live a good life that Dio himself uh, espoused throughout all his works. So I don't know. Just kind of an idea on the back burner. Um, I'll look into that later. Outside of that, I think for this one, that those were kind of the interesting things. I just really wanted to rant about One Piece because apparently, apparently I'm the odd man out there. But eh, we'll see. I have no idea what's going to happen with that. But yeah, with that, uh, I'm gonna clock out on this one. Like try to get some other schoolwork done, and I hope you have a good one.